Lift our hands and worship the King of Kings. Worship the ancient of days, the beginning and the end. Father, we exalt your holy name. Ranabako Shatan Libre no Zata. Zeko Satan Libalado Shakayadosa. If you have a prayer language, come on, begin to speak. Radabako Shananamano Zelede Shatan Libre no Saka. E Rabako Satan Libre de 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 Shananano Saka. E Rabano Shanade Now unto the Lamb upon the throne We raise a sound We raise a sound For He is God and God alone Alleluia Alleluia Lift your voice and shout it. Lift your voice and sing hey. I am about Sing hallelujah, hallelujah, yeah. hallelujah, 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 yeah. 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 Sing, lift your voice and shout it. Yeah. Sing hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Upon the throne, unto the Lamb, we raise a sound to you. Hey, we raise a sound to the ancient of days. Hey. Oh, for you are God and God alone. Oh my God, Hallelujah. Hey. Are you happy to be in God's presence? 
Come on. Let's put our hands like this. Hey. Come on. Everybody say, put your hands together. Hey. Come on now. Are we ready now? Say, the fragrance of my rose up to the Father. Darkness down the night quake at the presence of my worship. The presence of my worship rose up to the Father. Noises, thunders, lightning at the response. The fragrance of my worship rose up to my Father. Noises, thunders, earthquake. Ah, the response. One more time. The fragrance of my worship rose up to the Father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you ready now? The same first is first. It was faith that it turned to fire. My worship is my fragrance. This is how I win my battle. The same first it was fragrance. Then it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. Hey, this is how I win my battle. Say first it was fragrance. Then it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. Hey, this is how I win my battle. One more time. Say first it was fragrance. Then it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. Please that way. I do response. Hey. The fragrance of my worship rose up to the Father. Hey. I do response. The fragrance of my worship rose up to the Father. Yeah. Voices thundering that way. Say the fragrance of my worship rose up to my father. Hey, come on. Hey, say first it was fragrance, then it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. Hey, this is how I win my battle. Hey, first it was fragrance. And then it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. This is all with my battle. I said first it was fragrant. Then it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. This is how I win my battle. Hey, we give glory to God. Hey, glory. The name of Glory to God forever. Say, lift the name of Glory to God. We lift the name up above God. every other name. Hey, Glory to God. hey, forever. Hey, say, we lift the name up. Glory to God. Yeah, we lift the name up above every other name. Glory to God. One more time. Say, say, we lift your name up, glory to God. We lift your name up, glory to God. We lift your name up, glory to God. Say, we lift your name, we lift your name, we lift your name, we lift your name.
above every other name. Hey, above every other name. Go now. Forever and ever, oh God, you are good. Forever and ever, oh God, you are good. Forever and ever. Forever, you are forever and never and never God you are forever yeah. oh God you I know let's say who is on the Lord's side are you on the Lord's side as we raise our hands today Say, are you on the Lord's side? Say, are you on the Lord's side? As we lift our voice today, hey, we have take it up, say, forever and never. Oh God, and you are forever and never and never. Say, forever and never, hey, and never. Forever, one more time. Say forever, forever and ever, and ever. Hey, you are good forever, forever and now. Say, 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 who is on the Lord's side? Say, how you on the Lord's side? As we lift our voices to Judah, say, hey, hey, hey. Say, say, how you on the Lord's side? Say, how you on the Lord's side? As we lift our shout to the ancient of days, woo, the end. Say, say, how you on the Lord's side? Say, how you on the Lord's side? As we lift our voice to say, one more time. Say, are you on the Lord's side? Are you on the Lord's side? Are you on the Lord's side? As we lift our voice today. One last time. Say, are you on the Lord's side? I am on the Lord's side. Are you on the As we lift our voice today. Yeah. The Bobewa, hey, Bobewa, hey, why you, hey, 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 why won't say, take all the glory, take all the honor, take all the glory, take all the honor, hey, take all the glory, hey, 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 the Bobe, the Bobewa, why you, hey. Hey, one more time. One more time. One more time. One more Voice to say, 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 are you on the Lord's side? Say, are you on the Lord's side? I can lift our voice to say, say, are you on the are you on the Lord's side? Say, are you on the Lord's side? I can lift our voice to say, the end. Somebody give the Lord a big shout in the house this morning. Hallelujah. If you are sure that you're on the Lord's side, you will shout better. 
And do you know what? It is sweeter knowing that God is on your side. So there's a difference between being on the Lord's side and when God is on your side. Because when God is on your side, prosperity is sure. So if you are sure that God is on your side, give him a bigger shout in the house this morning. Hallelujah. I need to look at somebody and tell the person, neighbor, a bologna is standing beside you. Okay, imagine in the currency that you want. Look at the person again. Say, neighbor, acknowledge me. A bologna is standing beside you. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a big hand of... You see, sometimes it is not easy for you to understand who you are. But the truth of the matter is the devil who is trying to put you down knows who you are. And God that is fighting for you knows who you are. But it is painful that you are clueless about who you are. It is better for you to know that you prosper. It has nothing to do with the economy. You are a blessed child of God. You are a prosperous child of God. You flow in abundance. Financial prosperity is your portion. So please understand who you are. Because I know when I ask people to do this one now, some people are looking at me like, hmm, me that don't have a work, a job. It's me that wants to say I'm a billion. Let me keep it to myself. No, a closed mouth is a closed destiny. Until you say it, you will not see it. So you have to what? Keep saying it. And one of the ways to unlock financial prosperity is in thanksgiving. You thank God not because of what you have. You thank God because of what you know you are. Praise God. So your thanksgiving goes ahead to unlock financial prosperity. Your thanksgiving goes ahead to unlock abundance. In the book of Matthew chapter 14, verse 17 to 20, I will just give a summary. You see, after Jesus Christ had spoken to the people, preached and all of that, he asked the disciples that they should settle down. And then they brought to him five loaves and two fishes. And then in verse 19, what did he do? He raised it up and gave thanks. And in verse 20, what happened? Abundance. There was an overflow. Thanksgiving brings what? An overflow. Thanksgiving brings abundance. Thanksgiving gives you what? Financial prosperity. So I don't know who you are right now in the house. I don't care where you think you are. You might be squatting with someone. You might not have a job. Your salary might be small. But no matter what level you are right now, with this understanding, raise up your hands to heaven and begin to give God thanks. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Say, Father, I give you thanks. Lord, I give you thanks. Lord, I give you thanks. For where I am today, Father, I give you thanks. For who I am today, Lord, I give you thanks. Hey, it could have been worse, but Lord, you are my provider. Lord, you have been my helper. Lord, you have been my keeper. Lord, you have been my sustainer. I thank you for what I have today. Hey, I come with a grateful heart this morning to say thank you, to say thank you, to say thank you, to say thank you. Father, I thank you. Thank you for where I am today. Lord, I am grateful. Lord, I am grateful. Lord, I am grateful. I am grateful for yesterday. I am grateful for today. I am grateful for my tomorrow. Lord, I am grateful. Lord, I am grateful. I am grateful for where I am today. I am grateful because I know who I am in you. Lord, I am thankful because I know you are on my side. And that's why I cannot be stranded. Hey, Kaboza. Zataria, elemente zuse taya balegedo se lebeke sote yede legede. Thank you, Father, because you are on my side. Financial prosperity is my portion. Thank you, Lord, because you are on my side. 
blessings they are my portion thank you lord because you're on my side hey abundance is my portion thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you at every level that you are you can give thanks to god this morning at every level that you are you should give thanks to god this morning this is the secret to abundance. This is the secret to increase. This is the secret to your next level. This is the secret to your prosperity. Open your mouth and give God thanks. Lord, we thank you. As a house, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. Lord, we give you all the glory. We we'll bless your holy name. Be thou exalted in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we give you thanks. We we'll praise you. Thank you for those things that our eyes have seen. Thank you for those things our hands have touched. Thank you for the blessings. Thank you for your overflowing grace. Thank you for the favor. Thank you for the increase. Thank you for the next level. Thank you for the prosperity. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. If you are very confident about who you are right now, give the Lord a bigger shout in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, ye are queens and kings in the kingdom of God. That means when you make a decree, it shall come to pass. Now put your hand in the chest and say, I shall have what I decree. Because I believe it belongs to me. This is a good place to celebrate your father. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. I shall have what I decree, because I believe it belongs to me. I shall have what I decree. Yes, I believe it belongs to me. So I'm going to speak. Yes, I'm going to speak to the atmosphere. Whatever God has decreed to you, speak. To if He's saying it, He will do it. All you have to do is speak to that situation. Speak, speak. to the atmosphere. I shall, I shall have what I decree. I decree. Yes, I yes, I believe it belongs to me. Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. It belongs to me. Belongs to me. Yes, I'm going to speak into the atmosphere. Whatever God has decreed to you, speak into. Speak your miracle into existence. Whatever He says, He will do it. Speak into, oh. speak into the Can you help me? Speak your healing into existence. Speak into, speak oh. into yeah. So speak, 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 speak. decree your baby. Call them for speak, 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 whatever it is, speak, 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 
declare it. Declare it. Call for those things. Call for those things. Whatever it is. Declare it. Oh, declare. Yeah. It's mine. It's mine. My miracle. It's mine. My healing. It's mine. It is mine. It is mine. Say yeah. 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 Do you believe it? Yeah. Do you receive it? Yeah. Then it's yours. Yeah. Then it's yours. Yeah. Then it's yours. Yeah. Then it's yours. Yeah. So speak it. Speak it. Whatever it is. God is able. Whatever mountain. God is able. So break it down. So break it down. Say yeah. My God is able. Say yeah. My God is able. So do exceedingly. Abundantly. More than what you ask. Yeah. Yeah. So speak. Speak. Comfort your children. Speak. Comfort your healing. Speak. Comfort your miracles. Speak. They're happening now. Speak. They're happening now. Speak. Yeah. So I'm going to speak. Yes, will hear your increase. Speak into. Speak into the atmosphere. The Bible says, when you ask, He will answer. When you knock, He will open. Speak. Speak into the atmosphere. Whatever it is, your God is more than able to fulfill. So I shall have. I want to sing the word of mine. What are you decree? What I decree? Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. It belongs to me. It belongs to me. So you're going to. Call for those things that are not as though they were. So you're going to speak into the atmosphere. Oh God, we give a praise. Come on, celebrate Jesus wherever you are. Come on, don't stop declaring it. Come on, speak into the atmosphere. You call those things that be not as though they were. He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that we can ever ask or think. Come on, call it forth. Call your children forth. Call that job forth. Come on. Speak into the atmosphere. Think on by hearing, by hearing, by the word of God. Come on, the word of God says that we prosper. Come on, speak into the atmosphere. Yeah. 
goodness is running out is running out to me I don't know about you but I'm so sure about it your goodness is running out yeah. it's running out your goodness is running out to your goodness is running out it's running out to me it's running out your goodness is running out it's running out it's running out to me and declare it I can see I can see I can tell I don't care and I know it's the confidence that we have hallelujah can we just lift your hands and just give God praise still in an attitude of worship just give him praise thank him thank him for your life thank him for everything that he has done thank him for his faithfulness i want you to lift your hands up when you lift hands to god is a sign of surrender is a sign that god help me is a sign that god i need you is a sign that god i depend on you is a sign that god i rely on you Lift your hands and just talk to him. Tell him that, God, I thank you. I thank you for how far you have helped me. I thank you for how far you will help me. Thank you because this month is specially designed for me. He says, show me the money. Show me the money is also a prayer. He said, call upon me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. So this month, God will show you where your money is. God will show you where your abundance is. God will show you where your treasures, that your name is written on it, where he has packaged it. This month is a prayer for wisdom. Show me the money. Show me the money. Open my eyes. As your servant speaks, let my eyes be open. Let me see the opportunities around me. Let me see the abundance that you have placed around me. Let me see the wealth that is right before my eyes. Open my eyes, oh Lord. Oh, lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Pray that prayer. Say, God, show me the money. Show me my wealth. Show me that my treasure, that my name is on it. Show me, show me, show me. Open my eyes of understanding. Oh, my loser, Tandara. Father, we give you praise. Father, we we'll thank you because this month, you are showing us where our money is. You are showing us where our abundance is. Father, we we'll give you praise. Oh, we give you glory, Lord. Mando Shatanda Karia. I want you to pray that prayer. It's one of the most powerful prayers you will ever pray. That God show me the money. God give me wisdom. God give me wisdom. In the quest for prosperity, the principal element is wisdom. In the quest for money, the principal requirement is wisdom. 
And that is why I say, show me the money. This month, our papa, the servant of God, will be sharing with us how to see the money. Our heart is open. Our heart is open. Begin to pray. Continue to pray. Mando Satan Dakaria. Malibo Sekedia. I will not be stranded. I will not be blind. I will not be right in front of wealth and be blind to it. My eyes will be open. Every veil covering my eyes of wealth is open this month. This month I will see clearly. There will be clarity. There will be clarity. There will be sharpness of vision. I will see clearly, clearly where my money is. I will see clearly where it is. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you worship. Mando satanda karia. Malibo sote keria. Mande keribo shitata. Le keribo shitata lia. And just bless the name of the Lord this morning. Je mo kodara daza dagadara. Lindo rodo ba kazi kada ya da 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 ba lebo roda kaza tara da ba 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 joda ba bra da za takara da ba 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 ba. Oh Lord, we just thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We are a prosperous nation. We are a prosperous people. Andre de bo so koto robo shatagara di kada da ba. We give you praise, Lord. We bless your name. Thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Before you sit down, help me tell two or three people I can never be poor. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, show me the money. Glory to God. All right, take your seat, take your seat, everybody. We're going to go into it. So today, <laughs> uh, this is the second part of the series we started last week. I'm so excited about this series because I feel it's something very necessary with what people are going through right now and the world, really, but particularly in, in our country, Nigeria. But people all over the world are feeling the financial crunch. As a matter of fact, um, most of you know um, I'm Pastor Mildred. We travel a lot. We travel a lot. <laughs> I don't know anybody, any minister that travels as much as us. I know they, they might be, but I don't know them. You know, um, <laughs> we, we, we travel, man. We travel a lot to preach. And um, in, in all our traveling, one of the things I'm beginning to see as I've traveled around the world, one of the things I'm beginning to see is that a lot of Christians are broke. A lot of Christians are broke. And, and, and I and my wife have agreed and decided that we're going to bring out a set of teachings, a manual and course or courses for believers. Because we believe every Christian family can be rich. That's what we believe. From God's word. It's not just um, talking. It's from God's word. So we believe that if they can put one or two things in place, every Christian family Cambridge. And every Christian family should be rich because poverty is such a danger. We said that last week for those that were here last week. If you missed last week, go and watch it. And don't be missing service. This is not a series to miss. So poverty, we, 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 we believe, we began to see that churches, a lot of churches are struggling financially. A lot of churches are struggling financially. And we want to help believers around the world because poverty has a way of shaking your core. You can't serve God as freely as you want. There are people that can't go to church because they have to work. Some can't even afford to go to church because of money and lack of funds. So we're very passionate about this, guys. And um, we, we believe and decree that you will be the first beneficiary of it in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. Today we're going to be looking at the differences between the Elijah model and the Elisha model. Elijah model and the Elisha model. Okay? Before we go into that, quick recap from last week. How many people remember the five stages of money that people can be in? The five stages. Who remembers? What's number one? No, no, you're not sounding like you're sure. What's number one? Poor. Some people are poor. And we said poverty is not a state, but a mindset. Number two is what? Broke. Some people are broke. And amongst all five, four of them can be broke. Can be broke. Because broke, being broke is a temporary state of not being liquid. So sometimes a poor person can be broke. He's broke all the time. A, 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 the next person can, the rich person can also be broke because of investments and things he has done with his money. So being broke is a temporary state of not having liquidity. Third stage is where you are comfortable. All right? Third stage is what? Comfortable. This person's expenses and income 
are always in close uh, fellowship. <laughs> so he has a lot of things, but he also doesn't have liquidity. He has things, but no liquidity. The first stage is who? I can't hear you. First stage is who? Rich. These are good guys. These guys have loose change left after they take care of all their basic needs. After they pay for their car, their house, school fees, buy clothes. These guys buy clothes every month. <laughs> I like rich people. I like rich people. Uh, they look it. They look it. <laughs> Whenever I travel all over the world, I see rich people. Uh, every, everything they wear, everything they carry has label. LV, Gucci, uh, 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 <laughs> is it Balenciaga or Balenciaga? Everything is label. Everything, you know, Bugo Boss. They, they like designer label. <laughs> Rich people. Everything, the badge, the Gucci, even Gucci himself can't wear that Gucci. Gucci, the forehead, the stamp Gucci. <laughs> they like designer labels so much. Ah! If you're not careful, you can drop quickly from the rich. But I like the wealthy. That's where I belong. That's the, that's the class where I belong. <laughs> The wealthy, you usually can't tell. When you see them among any of these four people, you can't tell they are the wealthy. Their car sometimes is not standing out. Their clothes is not standing out. They dress normal. They, everything looks normal. The places where you will know they have money is their house, for instance. The area they live, they don't like noise. So they just go to Southwest Koi. You know, just go to Bodylon. <laughs> if you know, you know. Okay, so, uh, you know what I'm saying. So, um, <laughs> praise God. So, but the, the welding um, at the lost degree. So, we, we did that in detail last week. So, please, go listen to it if you didn't get it. So, let's dive into today. So, how, again, who can remember? I said there's one word that is going to run through all through this month that determines your prosperity. It's a four-letter word. Who can remember what that word is? No, say it loudly. What's that word? Your soul. Your soul, S-O-U-L. So we established last week, taught John 2, that you prosper equally as your soul prospers. Equally as your soul prospers. So the first thing we said is having a prosperous soul prosperous soul. We dealt with that. Today, we're going to look at Proverbs 13, I think. So, like I said, all through, we're going to look at the kind of, is your soul. Is your soul that determines your prosperity. Your soul is made up of your will, your emotions, and your thoughts. That's what is made up of your soul. So, it's an internal thing. Prosperity is from inside out. From inside out. It's your soul. And we said, wherever you are right now is a representation of your soul. No argument. It's just where your soul is. And all you need to do is to beef up your soul, work on your soul. It will produce a different result. So look at this one now. Today, we're looking at another kind of soul. It said, the soul of the sluggard. So there is the soul. You see what I'm saying? This is important, guys. He said, the soul, I tell you, the soul is where the problem is. Nigeria is not your problem. Dollar rate is not your problem. The economic news is not your problem. Uh, inflation rate, un unemployment rate, dollar rate, all those things are not your problem. The governor, the president, they are not your problem. The problem is the soul. That's what I'm trying to tell you. He said, the soul of the sluggard desire it and had nothing. But he said, the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Is the soul. Is the soul. Is there's a soul of the sluggard. That's the lazy. Then there's the soul of the diligent. So today we're looking at the diligent soul. If you must be made fat, your soul must be diligent. That's your thinking. Your will, your emotions must be diligent. No food for lazy man. There is no anointing oil that can make you rich if you have, if you have the soul of a sluggard. No miracle prayer can make you rich if you have the soul of a sluggard, sir. Let's stop deceiving people. Too many lazy souls. 
can pray from now to 100 years, sir. This thing is so crucial. That's why people that are not Christians also can prosper. Because it's an issue of the soul. They too have soul. Once their soul is right, even though they don't know God yet, they can still prosper. It doesn't mean they'll go to heaven. They will still go to hell. They're not born again. But their soul can be prosperous. And you can be born again, heaven bound, tongue talking, hallelujah, shouting, Bible carrying, church attending, self fellowship leading. And be broke. Some of the brokest people in this country are Christians. So let's get it closer. It's an issue of the soul. They say the soul of the sluggard likes big, big things. <laughs> you sit down, you now browse different cars, browse different phone, browse different laptop, different expense, browse different shoe. <laughs> we should browse different jobs, jobs, jobs. The soul of the sluggard has desire. Desire. He's on Instagram checking people, what people watch, people are wearing, what shoe people are wearing. He's on his, he's checking the soul of the sluggard. He desired it. He said, but he had nothing. He said, but the soul of the diligent sharp. So there, there's something called the soul of the diligent. That means a lifestyle and a mindset of diligence. What does this mean? It means it's a lifestyle and a mindset of value. He's able to add value. He's not thinking of getting things. He's thinking of getting value. See, there are two different mindsets. And unfortunately for us, we are raising Christians that have, that have miracle mindset, that have God do it for me mindset, instead of people that have value mindset. The people with value mindset will always be richer than those that have miracle mindset. That I told you last week. There's a difference between financial miracle and financial prosperity. Most people, most Christians I know, have a financial miracle mindset. So they will always be broke. Because unbelievers don't expect miracles, they by default have to have a prosperity mindset, value mindset. So they will always be richer, except we change our thinking. One is thinking of value, the other is thinking of a miracle. That's the difference between the Elijah model and the Elisha model. If you are thinking about miracles, let me tell you now, in your lifetime, maybe you have one or two or three miracles, financial miracles, your whole lifetime. Those miracles are meant for you to use wisely so that you will never need another miracle. But the Christians I see around me, want to perpetually live on financial... This world does not run on miracles. Even though miracles happen all the time. But it's not run on miracles. Oh, Mary got pregnant without anybody. She conceived a child. Is that how anybody... Do you, have you met, since that time, has any other person given birth to start uh, marrying a man? That's not how the world runs. It doesn't mean miracles don't happen, but the world doesn't run on miracles. It runs on principles. So the slow God is waiting for a miracle all the time. He desired it. Desired it from God. Oh God. Oh God. Desired it from God. It's the mindless, it's the mindless practices that I see in the body of Christ today. Very mindless. God will make you a billionaire. How? 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 If they dash you one billion, won't you run mad? If you're not doing anything with it. You know, you don't have anything to do with it. Since I've been a pastor, close to 30 years now, nobody has dashed me money in my whole life. Nobody has dashed me money. I cannot lie for you. However, people that have been blessed by my teaching or ministry have given me seed. There's a big difference. I'm not a random person that they met on the road and dashed money. They passed many people that were random, they didn't know, to me, that have blessed them. If I, would, if I never preached, if my messages never blessed them, they would never have given me one naira. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's from work. Money answers to value. To value. You can have as much money as you want if you can give as much value as people need. I'll say that again. You can have as much money as you want 
if you are willing to give as much value as people need. There's no limit to how much you can have. Ask the Bill Gates and the Mark Zuckerberg and co of this world. If you can meet the needs of people, all your own financial goals will be met. But praying and fasting for money is a sure way to remain poor. And this is what I see poor people do all the time. All the time. Instead of reading books and learning and sharpening their skills, they are praying and shouting, God, come and bring money. Hunger. Hunger. You know Iya? Do you know Iya? <laughs> oh, God. Free Africa. Free Africa. In the name of Jesus. We have been operating the Elijah model in churches instead of the Elisha model. What's the difference between the two? Elijah, when they introduce him, they say it's Elijah of Tishbite. Statistically, no father, no mother. <laughs> it's assumed that he just appeared from nowhere and also disappeared. Remember he didn't die? He disappeared. Oh, the chariots carried him. So they assumed that's how he came. No structure. That's what that means. If you were never born, it means you have no structure. You don't understand growth. No understanding of growth. He just appeared, probably by a chariot, and he left by a chariot, I suspect. No structure. But Elisha was a very different man. When Elisha was introduced, he was introduced as the child of somebody. Structure. <laughs> Because when you have parents, it means they've, they've, you've done homework, they've told you this is your coffee, this is time to sleep. So Elisha understood structure. Elijah came by chariot, by fire, by force. That's how Elijah came. <laughs> ah, is somebody catching what I'm saying this morning? Elijah came by chariot. Elisha came from a family structure. Father, mother, greet your mother in the morning, junior, greet, wash dishes. He understood structure. So they, that's why historically, biblically, they showed us that Elisha did more miracles than Elijah. His ministry outlasted, lasted more than Elijah's own. See the two of them, when they were going to help a widow, or two of them helped widows, Elijah met the widow and said, give me your last food. <laughs> by fire, by force. Say, give me your last food and your food shall be sustained. <laughs> Only problem is that after that famine, after all that issue, that woman will remain poor because financial miracles don't last. Financial miracles don't last. Nobody can dash you an amount of money that will sustain you for the rest of your life. Nobody. I've never seen anybody that they dash money. And that was the money he used for the whole rest of their life. So the challenge with Elijah model is that yes, giving and receiving is a part of the covenant, of course. But it's not the key to sustainable financial prosperity. It's an addition to what you're doing. He said, God will bless the work of your hands. Very important. So he said, give me your last food. Yes. Financial breakthrough seed. Yes, it's good. I believe it's seed. Yeah, you know that. <laughs> but when that man of God goes, hunger, when that season passes, hunger will beat you. But see, Elisha, a widow came. Same kind of similar situation. We don't have anything. They are going to carry my children as collateral. No money. My husband died leaving us in debt. What man of God help us? Elisha said, what do you have in your house? Ah, different approach altogether. He said, what do you have in your house? <laughs> the woman said nothing. He said, then your hunger will kill you. Think. Elisha, mother, will force you to think. Elijah will just do a miracle to you and you'll be stranded when he's taken up in a chariot. You'll be stronger, will beat you when he goes. Elisha will leave you better than where he met you. <laughs> Elijah will leave you where he met you. Because hunger will beat you when he's gone. Elisha forced that woman to think because he, she's a Nigerian Christian, mindless Christian. Just shout. 
God, do it. He said, no, you will do it, madam. What do you have in your house? She said, nothing, then you will die. She said, oh, okay, remember, only a small cruise of oil. He said, that's what we need because you can't get something out of nothing. We need something God can bless. I watched, I was, I think I posted a video about David and Goliath or something, I can't remember now, and somebody wrote under the video that David actually killed Goliath by the anointing. Ah! David killed Goliath by the anointing? At all! He killed Goliath with a slingshot. It was a skill he had developed. In fact, it wasn't the slingshot that killed Goliath, it was the skill, because if they give you that slingshot, you will kill yourself, not even Goliath. <laughs> You will shoot it to go back to your own soldier. <laughs> so it wasn't the slingshot that killed Goliath. It was the skill. Now God anointed the skill. That's what God does. He anoints your skill. If you have no skill, there's nothing to anoint. Hunger will beat you, sir, in church. You're a very hungry, poor Christian. That's all you'll be. Shouting every day. That's what's going on in my country. Everybody shout. Go and do the thing. The guy wrote, that is the anointing that killed Goliath. I said, not all. At all. If it's the anointing that killed Goliath, then David would have even used um, Saul's armor. Remember they gave David Saul's armor. He said, I'm not used to it. He said, I'm not skilled in this area. I'm not skilled in this area. I want to function in the area I'm skilled. They gave him Saul's armor. If you know anything about those days, Saul's armor was the best. The best. Heaviest sword, strongest armory, strongest helmet. Everything the best. <laughs> he said, I can't use it. He said, let me use what I'm used to. Because if you have ever been in the bush, you know how it was when we were young. So this young nation won't know that. But when we were young, everybody, we used to have catapult. You practice on beds. Sometimes you break somebody's glass. All of you run. You don't stay. You break somebody's window. So you break somebody's glass. You do, you practice. So this David was practicing the slingshot. He had mastered it. He had mastered it. So when the Goliath came, he said, I will use what I have as a skill. And God blessed it. Same thing with Peter. Do you notice that Peter always prospered with fishing? Peter didn't prosper with another thing except fishing. That's where his gift or his skill was. God uses your skill. If you are skillless, hunger will beat you. There's nothing we can do. Maybe once in a while you get a financial miracle, but nobody lives on a financial miracle, sir. People live with financial prosperity. There's a difference. Prosperity is flowing. Financial miracle is a one-off. David, uh, Peter prospered only by fishing. When he was fishing and he caught nothing, Jesus appeared and said, so out of your profession, so out of your skill, both was part of his job. So he sold his last. The only thing he had left that had meaning was the boat. The net, they don't need net. The fish food, they don't need that one. Fish didn't come. The only thing of value on Peter was the boat. And Jesus said, give me out of your boat. But Jesus gave him Elisha model. He caught fish. He didn't give him money. Caught fish. The fish was so much, he called his partners. They had their own, the two boats were sinking. After he caught that fish, Jesus said, I want to promote you to ministry. He said, Let's, you, you were fishing fish before, but now I'll make you fishers of men. His destiny was tied to his skill, fishing. Even when they wanted to pay tax, he didn't tell Peter, go and do public speaking. He didn't tell Peter, go and sell clothes. He said, no, if God wants to bless you, he goes straight again to what you're skilled at. Don't play with your skill. I don't play with my skill. I don't play with things I can do. I don't want to go wash cars. I don't want to cook food. I want to preach. I want to coach. I want to teach. That's where my skill is. Now, if I have to wash cars while I'm looking for a platform to preach, I'll wash cars. If I have to cook food while I'm looking for a person to preach, I'll do that. But when I get a chance, I will do what I'm skilled at because God blesses the area of your skill. So don't do the pay tax. <laughs> Peter, what are we going to do? They're going to arrest us. I, LRS will arrest us. What are we going to do? IRS will arrest us if you're in the US. What are we going to do? Jesus said, take your, your fishing equipment because he still had it. He still had it. He still had the skill. You see, your skill doesn't leave you at any age. He still had the skill. He said, go to, go to the water. Throw your hook or your net, whatever it is. He said, the first fish you catch, 
God blessed it, you see. There was supernatural in it, but there was a natural. God, he knew how to fish. He knew how to throw the net. That's why they didn't call John to go and catch fish. That's why they didn't call Bartholomew to go and catch fish. That's why they didn't call Matthew to go and catch fish. They won't catch any fish. He had to call Peter that could catch fish. But he said, no, I'm going to bless the fish. It won't be an ordinary fish. I pray for someone, and you understand my voice. Your skill will no longer be ordinary skill. In the name of Jesus, you will start earning a foreign currency for that skill. That same skill will start to end, open you international doors. In the name of Jesus. That's what God does. He opens the doors. He blesses you, but on your skill, not on your, open, not on your forehead. Not on your forehead. He didn't say God will bless your forehead. He said he will bless the work of your hands. So if I anoint your forehead, it's for fashion. The work of your hands is where the anointing is really going. Not on the forehead of your head. So Peter went there. Catch the, throw the first fish. First fish that came out, there was money in his mouth. When Jesus died, when Jesus died, and there was pandemonium, pandem, pandemonium and, and all those, <laughs> everywhere, jaga jaga, you know, every, there was, what did Peter do? He said, I go a fishing. He said, look, if all else, else fails, my fishing skill will sustain me, I will not beg. He went back to fishing and Jesus came and ate the fish. Oh. Jesus came and they made fish he ate properly. <laughs> because that's Peter's skill. Is somebody getting what I'm saying, sir? Elisha model is financial prosperity. Elijah is financial miracles. Financial miracles do, will not sustain you. That has been what the African church has been missing. Everybody sharing testimony of financial miracle. What I want to hear is a testimony of financial prosperity that I opened three businesses. <laughs> then I know you have money next week and next year and next two years. Financial miracle. <laughs> I've been in church for a long time. Some of that financial miracle is a big mistake to announce your financial miracle. Come and share testimony. Brethren, pray, 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 pray. The Lord, somebody dash me uh, $50,000. Ah, you won't make it to the car park. Christians will start begging you, <laughs> brother, my school fees, my child is dead. You need money to raise him up. My, <laughs> they will be begging you to this for the next three years. Who will be begging you that money? You will be broke. You yourself will need that miracle by the time they're done with you. Your family members, they must not hear. They will, be, they will be write you from village. They will finish your money. But if it's financial prosperity, it's flowing. So Elisha told that woman, what do you have in your house? She said, nothing. He said, you must have something. He said, it's only a cruise of voice. He said, bring it. He said, take it. Go and get capital. Borrow capital. Borrow vessels, not a few. See, you see, Elisha had strategy. Strategy, business strategy. Don't borrow too old. It will finish quickly. Borrow vessels, not a few. We don't know how many they borrow, sir. We don't know how many they borrow, sir. Say, borrow from everywhere. Get vessels, not a few. He said, fill it with oil and start to sell. If you are not selling, <laughs> you are selling. <laughs> Is somebody getting that? If you are not selling, they are selling you. I hate when I go to any mall or store and I'm spending. Do I, I'm only happy if I'm also selling. If I'm only spending, I'm getting poorer. When I enter a mall and I'm, I'm, I'm buying, I'm buying, I'm buying, I'm buying, I'm getting poorer. If you're not selling something also, somewhere, you will get poor. He said, gather the vessels Fill it up and begin to sell it. I have a guy. <laughs> he's one of the biggest sales coach from Africa at least. And he's global. His name is Paul Fo. I love the guy. Paul Fo. He talks about selling. Sell, sell, sell. You must sell. What are you selling? What are you selling? What are you selling? Package your gift to sell it. Package your talent to sell it. Package that product to sell it. That thing you are doing for free, start selling it. Sell it in a way that more people can use it. Package it in a way that more people can use it. Sell, sell, sell. How do you not like to sell? How do you not know how to sell? You must know how to sell. If you're not selling, you won't be, you won't be, you won't be sustained. He said, put, the, put it in, get many vessels, fill it up, and sell. Look at this. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, go and sell the oil. No, give me the verse. But let me read I like the story. Give me like from verse 5 or something. Quickly. So, so she went from him and shut the door and her, her and her sons. Ah, that's, you see, when is financial prosperity? It's a family business. 
Hey, look, build something your children can eat from. Oh, somebody didn't hear what I said. I said, build something your children can eat from. That woman that they did miracle, Elijah did miracle, will our children eat from that one? Now it's gone. I should have never heard of it. But this one, see, she shot the Elisha mother. They shot the thing. She and her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. Next verse. He said, and it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said to her son, bring me yet a vessel. They were in a family business. These children will learn, even after this woman is gone, this woman, these children know the business now. He said, bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there is not a vessel more. And the oil stopped. In other words, what they will now do, now that they've sold, the, remember, I give me what they say, they borrowed many vessels, not a few. When they, when they sell all the many vessels they have, the money they get from them, they will now go and buy from a supplier. And now they, they have now started the oil, an oil business. Everybody now knows them as the dealers of oil in that town. Sustainable business. He said, go borrow these vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Say, borrow not a few. Give me, where, give me where they say they sold it now. Go there. Quickly, DJ. He said, after they filled all the vessels, they went to sell it. I think it was seven or something. Give me. He said, then she came and told the man of God, he said, go sell the oil and pay thy debt and leave thou and thy children of the rest. You see, Elisha's design, that woman will never need her again till she dies. Nigerian Christianity, the pastors are structured in a way that you can never live without them. You must come again for another prayer. You must come again for another uh, teaching. You must come again. You can never be free. This model, Elisha model, empowers you. Go and do it. Go and pray. Christian model is the disciples told Jesus, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Nigerian model. Pray for us as John prayed for his disciples. <laughs> and if I pray for you today, when you have need tomorrow, what will you do? You come again for another prayer. That the Elijah model only favors Elijah. Elijah gets rich. The disciples get poor. That's the Elijah model. You need Elijah every day. But the Elisha model, he said, you and your children, go and sell it and live off it. Where did Elisha get this mindset from? He grew up in a home. There was structure. Secondly, he was in the business before he entered ministry. I always love people that were working before they started ministry. They bring a certain level of gift. I hate, or not reason I hate, but I don't really fancy people that have not done anything in their life just start from, from ministry. They will, see, they will see the church as their only survivor. They have not walked on the streets. No experience with life. That's why if you look at some of the greatest, greatest uh, uh, men of God we have, they have work history, even outside before they entered ministry. He's bringing the experience from the workplace. Elisha was running a powerful business, family business probably, when they called him to ministry. Elijah, Elijah was saying, I'm not doing it again. So God said, go and anoint Elisha as your succession. So Elijah went, saw Elisha, threw his mantle on him. In those days, when, when that happens, it means, you know, your master is telling you, it's time to follow me. So Elijah threw the mantle on Elisha, meaning, follow me. But Elisha had sense. Elisha was a businessman. Elisha had structure. He didn't just follow him. Elijah wanted him to follow immediately. But Elisha said, I'm going to go back home and put structure to the business before I follow you. Hey, hey, may God raise more Elishas in our time. People don't understand systems and structures. You want to leave your department, just carry your bag and travel, relocate. You want to leave your church, just travel. No, no structure, no system. As, they, as he threw the mantle on Elisha, Elisha said, in fact, the Bible said before then, Elisha was working with 12 oxen. In the, was plowing with 12 oxen. 12 oxen, that's, that's, that's a massive business. 12 oxen, that's a massive, look at it here. It says, so he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shephat, I told you he had family, who was plowing with what? 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he with the 12, he was with the 12th one. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. Next verse. It says, 
And he, and, he said, and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said, on, Elijah said unto him, go back again for whatever. He said, if you don't follow me now, I'll be going. But Elisha said, look, I can't just leave my family and my business like that. See what he did next. He said, and he re- Elisha returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them. He did send forth. Not like all these rebellious children I'm seeing now. You leave a church, just leave. You leave a business, you, you, you slam the door. I'm going to get to that. You want to resign from your office, just slam the door. You insult your boss, insult everybody before you leave. You will surely come back begging with that behavior. You are not living with grace, you are living with a curse. You want to leave a church, leave a business, leave an office? Leave well. They helped you. They, if they are so evil, why did you stay for one day? If they are so evil, you would have stayed, one of you stayed 12 years, 10 years. In a place, eight years, two years. If they were evil, you would stay two years. At least that two years, they sustained your life. Don't slam the door. Live well. Make sure they bless you. Make sure they release you. Make sure they're happy as you're going. Do send forth. Don't just disappear. You're relocated. Just disappear. Your office is waiting for you. You are, you are at the airport. You will suffer in the land you're going, sir. Because you have no regard for relationships. Some of those, we are going to meet them again in life. Life goes in a circle. You meet them again. This life is too small. You will run into them. You will need their favor soon. Or you will need the favor of somebody that knows them. And they will ask that, that, that one of your boys is asking for something. <laughs> you say, don't touch that boy, he's a fool. He returned back from him. He took a yoke of oxen and he slew them. And he boiled their flesh with the instruments of oxen and gave unto the people. He had to tell his staff. He directed every time, said, you take over this business. You take over, I'm going to do ministry now. You guys take over. Make sure the clients are well taken care of. Send forth. He said, he boiled them against the people and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered to him. He had structure in his life. Elijah had no structure. Just disappear. Enter chariot anytime you like. And just disappear. Confuse everybody when you go. <laughs> Elijah ran back. Call the people. Call his father and mother. They, must, they should bless you. They might not agree with your plan, but let them be aware. Don't act like a, like a, like a jugunu. You know jugunu? <laughs> Some of you don't know jugunu. Don't act like a jango. You know jango? So, ah, These are old, old movies you guys don't know about. You're not a cowboy. Behave well. You want to leave a church, just disappear from back door. <laughs> For somebody that has labored over you spiritually. That is spiritual ignoramus. You're walking somewhere. You just carry your bag and go. Then you start insulting them. That company, they're all useless in that office. They're all useless. <laughs> you'll, be the, you, 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 you'll be the first useless person. Let them know ahead of time. I might live in three months. Pray for me. Release me properly. That the one day you will own your own too. Because he that is faithful in another man's own. He shall be rewarded with his own. This is why many people can never own their own. Because the way they are running on that man's own, they can never, never own their own. Never be blessed. Haven't you seen many gifted people that never make it? Many skilled people that never make it? Because they are rascals. They are spiritual rascals. Haven't you seen talented music ministers that can never make it? Their voice is good. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The voice is so nice. Ooh. Nobody, nobody buys it. Nobody cares. Because he left his father. He left his mentor and started insulting them. Those are sure ways to say that Elisha understood relationship. I can go on and on about Elisha and Elijah model. Do you see, Elijah didn't like people. He didn't like human relations. He always going to the cave, always going under the ground. Always go- Talk to human beings. Poor people. One of the things about poor people is that they, are, they have poor relational skills. To be poor, it means you have slammed too many doors. All the doors God wants to use to bless you, you have slammed them. It's one of the trademark of poor people. Bad with human beings. Bad relationship. Check any real poor person. He has more people he's quarreling with than more than his friends with. And he has the worst friends. He has, he has quarreled with the good people in his life. And he's, he's entertaining the useless ones that are more useless than him. Check any broke person. Very poor and broke person. They are poor relationship. Elijah was so not good with relationship that he was depending on brook of water and raving, raving. No human being could be sent to him except bed. 
The worst bed, self. Raven is one of the worst beds possible. The stingiest bed. That's the one they could send to him. And of course, bed, after a while, he would tire. They said the bed stopped bringing the food, the water dried. That's the only time Elijah agreed to talk to a human being. But see, Elisha, he understood the power of relationships. He said he was passing through a town, greeting people, relating with people, say, God bless you, I'm just passing by. So I should greet everybody. And one woman noticed, this man of God is always passing here. He said, let's build something for him. So that whenever he's passing, he'll say, he's so friendly. He's so friendly. So they, they built a corner of their house where Elisha will be staying. And Elisha was staying there every time he passed. If it's Elijah, he'll go to cave. He'll go to cave. Because he doesn't talk to people, he'll go to cave. But Elisha was staying there every time. And after so many times of staying there, Elisha said, well, let's bless this woman. She has been good to us. And the statements Elisha made shook me and shocked me. It shook me and shocked me. Do you know what Elisha said to the woman? He said, he told Gazi, go and ask the woman what we can do for her. He said, should we speak to the governor for you or the commander of the army? Ah, ah. If it's Elijah, you know Elijah will not say that. Elijah, come, let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Let me spit on you a bit. Elijah will go straight to prayer. But Elisha was so relational that even as a man of God and somebody in ministry, he had connections in politics. Listen very carefully, all business people. You cannot afford to not be involved or interested in politics. I don't want to mention his name, but you know one of the richest men in Nigeria, no matter who wins, his business is winning. I don't want to mention his name. You know him, Abi? He settled every candidate. All candidates are his candidates. So no matter who wins, they will support his business. They all lined up to dedicate his, his new something he opened. You know the guy? I don't want to mention his name. <laughs> If you are in business, you are in politics. You just don't know. You just don't know. If I knew this long ago, when I started church, I would have been going to all the local government office if I knew. I admit you, I learned this one late. This is Elisha. I can't be more anointed than Elisha. But he knew the governor, sir. Personally. For him to, look, look at it now. He said, say unto her, behold, that has been careful for us, all this care. What is it to be done for thee? Say, wouldest thou be spoken? Will thou be speaking spoken for King James is tired? Basically, should I speak for the king or to the captain of the host, captain of the army? Elisha knew the king, and he also knew the chief of army staff. There's a message I preach in about in my, my pastor's church about the seven powers, the seven powers that exist. And I don't mean citadel and a bit of shaker. I don't, that's not what I mean. I mean real power. <laughs> I don't mean Citadel and a bit of shaker and uh, La Farrell, the nonsense. That's not what I'm talking about. But I, there are seven powers that exist. Political power, financial power, social power. There are seven of them. They are all powerful. So Elisha at least had three covered. Political, military, spiritual. He was spiritual. Power. Because this is the only prayer can solve truly. But he had military power. Military power. <laughs> this military power, you know, people think it's only in Nigeria. My friend was telling me that even in places like US, if a veteran, ex soldier, they respect you. You have discount for house, discount for anything you want to car, anything you want to buy, there's discount. If you park in the wrong place and there's veteran or army sticker on your car, even abroad, the police, they will leave you. This is why you are suffering for the country. Military power is power anywhere in the world. So Elisha said, Ah, I thought he's a prophet. He's just beginning to prophesy that. Mm, mm, mm. Shanta, ba, 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 ba. Don't say the Lord. No. He said, Can I talk to the king? Do you need something from the king? Should I call Asso Rock? All business people, even career people. Find out the local government chairman where your business is. Go and pay him a courtesy visit. Carry a bag of rice. Carry chicken, life or dead. Go and visit. Anyone that enters, greet them. Greet them. One of my friends told me, he's in the U.S. He told me that when he got to town, he learned this thing. That he, he contacted the chief of police of his city. In the U.S., not in Nigeria. U.S. Chief of police. And abroad, they are very, they, 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 they are, they're happy when people even come and greet them. Because nobody comes to greet them. He went and introduced himself, collected the guy's number. Became friends with the guy, casually. He said, some months after, one of his boys that is uh, technically illegal, technically, if you know what I'm saying, 
drove a car, and the guy had fake license. Drove a car in the U.S., and police stopped him and said, let's see your license. And they found the license was fake. And of course, they detained him, locked him up. <laughs> this is my friend, call chief of police of his city. Hey, hello. Say hi. Say, oh, one of my boys just drove a car, you know. He had a fake license on him, so on, so on. He was arrested. And I said, the chief of police asked him, so what do you want me to do? He said, I want them, I want them to let him go. He said, okay, I'll let him go. But make sure he never drives in this city again. In America, chief of police, they, they released the boy. Imagine if he never went to greet the guy. If he just came outside prophesying, mm, oh, shana, blah, 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 blah. He, he will sleep in jail. He will sleep in jail. So don't, don't, be, don't, be, don't be ignorant. If you are a business, go and greet everybody. In some cases, it's the area boys you will greet because they have more power than the boy. The, <laughs> than the boy. I don't know where we make me and Gideon and some people were driving. We saw uh, a police standing still. Area boys were directing traffic. Police was <laughs> being directed. The area boys were not controlling the traffic. Sometimes they have more power than the police. <laughs> so you greet everybody, sir. Be in good terms, everybody. Elisha said, can I talk to the king on your behalf or the chief of army staff? Elisha was relational. Elijah didn't like people. He caused fire to burn them every time. Somebody get what I'm saying? So there's an Elisha model and there's an Elijah model of prosperity. Elijah believed in financial miracle. Elisha believed in financial prosperity. One is continuous. The other one is one of, what am I saying? The soul of the diligence. So put in the work. In summary, put in the work. Put in the work. Don't go and ask your boss for a raise. Never. Instead, ask him what you can do to make his life easier. Did you get what I said? Don't write your boss and say, we need to increase our salary. Things are tough. No, 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 no. Your boss is, that, your boss is not you open the business to make your life easy. So instead, ask him, sir, is there anything that is in your heart that we've not done? Ask him that, is there anything I'm doing? How do you rate my work? Are there things I should be doing that I'm not yet doing well? Are there things that you would have me do that I'm not yet doing? Do you have more work for me? That's how to get a raise. Your boss will start noticing you that you're among those that have sense in this office. Don't join people that gather and criticize the boss, criticize the company. They will never rise. Instead, look for how to better the thing. Bring solutions. Whenever in a meeting, speak. Don't keep quiet. Make sure you are noticed. You are there. You have good ideas, oh boy. <laughs> I'm shy. No! No! Say, excuse me, I think this. Excuse me. Br talk, talk, talk. Even if it's a stupid idea, they will notice you are there. The soul of the diligent shall be made fat. The Bible said the, the, the poor person did not roast. The lazy man did not roast that which he took in hunting. That means he went to hunt, but he couldn't process it in a way that he can reach, can go further. You see, when you kill bushmeat, if you don't process it, it has a lifespan of less than 24 hours. You must sell. And every hour, the price reduces. But when you roast it, it becomes a delicacy. It can be sold as pepper soup, as grilled barbecue, as different things. It can last longer. And when you have added value to bushmeat, it be, the price also, you have added price to it. When you sell it raw, you sell at the base price. That's why Nigeria is poor. We sell crude oil. People that refine it and bring it to us earn more money, you see. Life always pays you for the value you bring. What value are you bringing? The office they put you, you, are, you left it the same way. Some of you left it worse. There are people I have seen, the way they work, they can never be rich. Except they change their work ethics. They can never, it's not a cost, it's a fact. Because you are a burden and a stress to your boss. There's no time he remembers you that he feels joy. He feels anger. I say, who is this? Who is this? Who is this? <laughs> you are a disturbance to him. How can he think of ever promoting you? How can he think of ever increasing your salary? Do, do you bring joy? Do you, does your name bring joy when your boss hears of you or thinks of you? Simple. You can know your financial destiny. I don't have to tell you. If your boss is frustrated when he sees you, when he thinks of you, you can never be rich. It's not a cost because money answers to value being produced. Nobody has dashed me money all my life. It's always about value. If I don't add value, they don't give me anything. That's just how simple it is. What value are you bringing? What are you improving? The gift or skill you have, how are you marketing it? Do you always have to work every time you earn money? 
or can you find a way to make that thing be any money before, even when you're not working? It takes thinking. You see, that's why lazy people can't prosper. The soul of the diligent, it's not, it's, diligent is not only physical work, it's mental work. How you are thinking. Do you know most of the rich countries don't have a lot of natural resources, but they have mental resources. But most of the poor countries have a lot of natural resources, but weak, weak mentally. We, as a whole country, we can't organize ourselves. 200 million people. Still no refinery. <laughs> 200, we can't organize ourselves. No light. We are still, I mean, if you watch news of 30 years ago, it can still pass as the news today. No light. And the politicians are promising us the same nonsense they promised us 30 years ago. That there will be light. There will be road. There will be water. There will be house. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Diligent. The soul of the diligent shall be made fat. The soul. So a diligent way of thinking. Work hard. There is no free money. There is what? No, that, that, there's no need to envy somebody that has. Walk the walk. There's much food in the tillage of the poor. Much food is produced by virtue of the ox. When you walk, ah, ask anybody that has traveled with me or done anything with me. I might look gentle, but we walk. We have no opening hours, no closing hours. Walk. When you're not working physically, walk mentally. You are thinking of how to better that thing. And you know the thing about anything, once you are actually working mentally, there's always an opportunity for improvement. There's always, they say the biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. Whatever you're doing can be improved. Don't beg for money. Improve the thing. Money will come. Don't beg for money. Stop it. Walk. No food for lazy man. Keep improving. Ah, I walk. That's why I don't, I don't pity people there. You're poor. It doesn't concern me. Go and walk. Because I'm walking. I'm walking too hard. Too hard. For somebody to not use begging and uh, harass me. You can't harass me begging. I'll beg you too. We'll beg ourselves. Go and walk. Nobody give you a job. Find something you can do for somebody. Wash people's clothes. Wash people's cars. Think. Think of how to add value to people. There must be a way. Sell product for somebody that has product that you can't sell. There's something you have. Like that's why Elisha told that woman. That's the same thing I'm telling you. What do you have in your house? Can you sew? Can you sell? Can you talk? Can you cry? Can you sing? There's something you can do, brother. Can you trek? Do you have high energy? You can do things. You, they, there's something you have. There's something you have. And I pray for you today. That God will bless that work of your hands. Even if it's a job you don't like, it doesn't matter. God will bless it. The doors will open for you. Grace will come upon that gift in the mighty name of Jesus. You will end in all currencies. I decree global doors to open for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Wow, wow, wow. Can we appreciate our Papa in the Lord? Can we appreciate? Hallelujah. Can we appreciate? I need everybody to stand up. Can we all be standing? Can we all be upstanding? Can we stand? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You can't hear this kind of message and remain the same. Uh, I want you just for two minutes to declare into your life. I'm not asking you to pray to God to give you money. I'm asking you to make some prophetic declarations into your life. Based on these things you've had, I want to give you two minutes. Can you open your mouth and begin to declare? Declare into your life that I will never be poor. I have understanding. I have wisdom. I had value. I had value. I'm a value-adding person. I'm not a burden. I'm not a parasite. Anywhere I go, I make a difference. Anywhere I go, I touch people's lives. I'm a difference maker. I'm a tree blesser. I'm not a burden to anyone. I'm a person of substance. I'm a shaker and a mover in my country. Where important people's name are mentioned, my name is included. Where greatness is mentioned, my name is found there. 
I make impact. I touch lives of people. I'm a, I attract money in different currency. Everywhere I go, I can never be stranded. I attract money. I have an atmosphere that is magnetic to money. In all currency, I might not even travel abroad. Where I am in Nigeria, money comes to me in different currency. My eyes are open. I attract wealth everywhere. Begin to pray that prayer. Begin to declare. 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 Poverty is not my portion. Poverty is not. Me and poverty, we are diverse. We are separated. We can never be together. I can never be poor. Because of me, my generation, they will experience abundance of wealth. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to give someone an opportunity here to accept Jesus into your life. If you are here, you are not born again. You've not known God. Oh, you are missing a lot. I want you to just raise your hand. You want to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Just raise your hand. I'll pray with you. A short prayer. Very powerful prayer. Your life will never remain the same. You will prosper in every area. Not just in money, but in all areas of your life. Can you just lift your hand? I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be born again. Hallelujah. Can we appreciate God? Can we appreciate our Papa in the house? We can do better. Can we clap for him? Hallelujah. Let us be seated in God's presence. And please, I want to also appeal to you that um, this series on prosperity, please, let us listen to them again and again. Please, let's get to them and, and listening to them. These are the things that change our lives. I remember many years ago, it's not just now. You see, Papa has a grace and an anointing for prosperity. You know, some people, they just preach prosperity, but some people are sent to the body of Christ and it's such. I remember many years ago, series, financial prosperity, back to back, back to back. Uh, there is a, a link that is going on in our WhatsApp groups, contains prosperity messages by PK. Please get it, listen to it again and again. Prosperity is inside out. So you need to have a transformation in your mind before it will become manifested in your life. Do we agree that we should get all the tapes of prosperity by PK? Are we going to listen to them? Are we going to shoo them and hear them again and again and again? God bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Kindly package your tithes and offerings. Package your tithes, your offerings. Um, if you have made pledges and it's not yet redeemed, please, let's do that this morning. Um, plans to move to the new site is still on course, and we shall be moving sooner than we'll even expect in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So please, let's package our uh, tithe offerings and all the pledges we have made. Let's write checks payable to David Christian Center. We have POS behind you can use it, and uh, you can also do bank transfers. The details are on the screen. If you are ready with your tithes and offering, can we lift them up to Jesus in faith and confidence? Let's lift our tithes. Let's lift them up to Jesus. Father, we thank you for all the tithes and offerings lifted up. We declare open heavens over the lives of every giver. We rebuke the devourer for their sake, and we say that 2024, they are carried on eagle's wings in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The stewards can go around and collect the offerings. Join us next week, Sunday, by 7.30 a.m. and 9 a.m. as we continue the series, Show Me the Money. Please spread the word. Invite as many people as possible. Also, we post scriptures on prosperity daily on our WhatsApp status. Let us get them and meditate on it. It's very important. Join us this Wednesday as we continue the series, Boosters, by 6.30 p.m. right here. We will be focusing on business boosters. So if you are looking taking your business to the next level, or even want to start a business to increase your streams of income, please don't miss it. This Wednesday is for business people. Today is day 26 of our 90 Days with Jesus devotional. Please, I hope you have been following. It's on YouTube and um, on all WhatsApp group. We share the link. Please, let's follow it. Join us for, for an awesome session in God's presence, teamed. Praise, power, and possibilities on Friday, 26. Can we appreciate God for that? We've been, we started two months ago. It's been very transforming and, um, you know, 
great encounters. Please uh, prepare to be part of it this 26th of April. It's going to be awesome. Please scan the QR code projected or visit our website for more details on all upcoming events in April. Praise the Lord. Now, we have some very special people in our midst. This is your first Sunday in DCC, the home of victorious people. We like to specially recognize and appreciate you. Can you just wave your hand? First Sunday in DCC, you are welcome. Wave your hand. Can you wave your hand? Can we clap for them? I want to see those hands. I want to see those hands. Let us wave our hands. Let us wave our hand. If you are seated with them, please, can you welcome them? Can you just give them a warm welcome and handshake? Keep waving your hand. We have a slip that I want to give to you. And I would like you to follow our ushers and they will attend to you briefly. Just keep waving your hand until someone attends to you, please. Keep waving your hand until someone attends to you. Can we clap for them? Can we keep clapping for them? Please, I will need the ushers to help get them so that we can attend to them. Just a short reception, five minutes. Praise the Lord. You are welcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Can we be upstanding as we hand the service? Let's be upstanding as we hand the service. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want you to look at your neighbor and tell them. Tell them boldly. If you have to be tough with them, tell them. Tell them that I'm Elisha. <laughs> I follow the Elisha method. <laughs> I don't depend on financial miracle. <laughs> I pursue financial prosperity. <laughs> I am not against people. <laughs> I am very relational. <laughs> and now tell them, say, I can never be poor. <laughs> say it with vehemence. I can never be poor. I live in abundance. I attract money. In multiple currency. In increasing quantity. On a continuous basis, in the name of Jesus. As David never lost the battle, so will God's work be with you. God bless you. The choir will minister to us as we go out and start second service. Come on. Hey. Put your hands together. We will run. We will run and we will not faint. We will never be defeated. We will never be defeated. No, we won't fail. No, we won't fail. We will never be shaken. Never be shaken. Never be moved. Never be moved. And as David never lost the battle. For the Lord is with us. He doesn't matter what comes against us. He will carry us. For the Lord is for us. He doesn't matter who can keep on. See what?
Put those hands together now. Put those hands together now. Put those hands together now. Together, 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 together. Oh, say we're back.